Hey guys, even here with another video. And in this video, unlike the previous one, the previous one I just analyzed the top four, the first callout. But now, in this video, we're gonna do analysis of all the callouts. Now, these are not exactly callouts because this is just bodybuilders posing together by the numerical orders. They're not in white. Um, Harry Chop and William Bonac right here to compare them one next to another. No, this is just by numerical order. That's how they posed one after another. And now this is how they go out and uh, they form these lineups. So this is the first lineup. And as you can see, Bonac, Max Charles, Hadi, and Lucas Osladil on the left. So Max Charles, I predicted him being last place at this year's Mr. Olympia, which is pretty possible. Hadi Chop and though brought an amazing conditioning and Lucas Osladil as well. I'm pretty sure I was wrong about Lucas. I gave him one of the last places. I think he, I said that he's gonna crack the top 10. He might do that. He might do that because he's very, very conditioned. Max Charles, he is kind of conditioned, but he has a thick skin, unlike Hadi and William and Lucas as well. But uh, this pose is weird because he flares his glutes up a little bit. It, so it looks like a bikini girl, but anyways, he looks very matured. I mean, his back and his glutes look very conditioned. And uh, this is a very good pose for Lucas, actually. But uh, Lucas is not really the question in this lineup. This one is dominated uh, by far by William Bonnick and Harry Chopin. And these guys are going to crack the top four actually later on. And we're going to see that. So as for now right here, I would still say that Max Charles is going to be one of the last places. He won the Romania Pro. That's how he qualified for this Mr. Olympia, which is basically the post-Olympia show. So he had a lot of time to improve. And I guess his muscularity is on point. He's very big and everything. But uh, the thick skin is really creating problems for him. He cannot really get super shredded. Now we go with the next lineup. With the next call out, if you will. So here we're going to have uh, Michael Lockett. Who looks amazing, really. He looks really good. Especially on the front. From the back, it's a different story. You also have uh, Steve Kuklum. Who is balding pretty bad. And he should definitely shave his head sometime soon. You also have Dexter Jackson standing next to him. This is a huge honor for Steve, being compared to the legend, the one and only, the Blade. You have also Mohamed Shaban representing Egypt right here. And uh, here you can see uh, Dexter compared to Steve. And uh, I don't know, from the front you can go both ways. I think you can go with uh, Steve, but from the back, uh, Dexter is definitely more detailed. And Michael Lockett looks amazing. Look at him here. Michael Lockett is definitely looking great in these uh, quarter turns from the sides and from the front, but from the back, not very good. I mean, uh, look at it now. You can see now that, um, you can see that Mohamed Shaban, a little bit off, a little bit off, very watery actually. So I think he has the worst conditioning alongside with uh, Max Charles. But Dexter is conditioned and uh, Michael Lockett, very, very conditioned, very conditioned, but that lower back is pretty much non-existent. It's all traps. And it's not the case with Dexter. Dexter's back is complete, complete through and through. But uh, Steve Kukla is probably the biggest threat right here, uh, alongside with uh, Dexter. But, uh, I mean, you can go either way. If you want to choose size and overall roundness and freakiness, you could go with uh, Steve Kuklo. But if you want details, you know, those fine little details, or the entire physique, then you would go with Dexter. And Dexter, honestly, kind of disappointed. Uh, some people even had him winning the Mr. Olympia, you know, having his uh, 30th victory. He had 29 pro victories, and uh, this would be his 30th, and that would be amazing, really a great story, but it's not going to happen. And now we come to the fourth call-out, not really a call-out, but the fourth lineup, whatever, and you have uh, John De La Rosa, uh, Cedric McMillan, Patrick Moore, and Luke Sando. Patrick Moore, a huge surprise, such a pleasant surprise, I really like his physique. Luke Sando, way off, way off, watery. Cedric, surprisingly good condition, I expected him to be worse, still pretty bad, but not as bad as I expected. John De La Rosa, nothing special, nothing special. I expected him to be very conditioned. I mean, if it happened, he would place much better, but no. Cedric, though, Cedric is definitely dominating this lineup, I would say so. I would have him beating all of these guys. Maybe not Patrick more, because Patrick is definitely more, more conditioned. And you can see it, especially from the back through the glutes and, and back, but, you know, he's not as big as these guys. He's definitely not as big as them. He needs to add more size, but he is big enough uh, to beat Luke Sando here. I mean, look at the back. Look at the back, compare them. Um, uh, Luke is unsymmetrical and unbalanced. I mean, he may be a little bit bigger, but he is not conditioned, and you cannot see the details, so size doesn't really matter in this, in this comparison right here. So in this lineup, I would go with Patrick Moore or Cedric winning it. 
And then you can go with probably John De La Rosa and Luke Sando, the last. Luke Sando really, really came up. I mean, pretty much all of these guys, this Mr. Olympia, didn't come very much on. What I liked probably the most is Patrick Moore. He's a pleasant surprise. Hari Chopin as well. William Bonek is on. Brandon Curry is as what as I expected him to be pretty much. Not super conditioned, but conditioned enough and not flat, which is very important. And Roly came a little bit off. Juan Morel also a big disappointment. He's too, too flat, too flat. But this can change tomorrow for the finals. But even if he changes that, I don't know if he's going to be in the top 10. And only the top 10 guys go to finals. We'll see about that, but uh, still, not very good Juan Morel. Brandon Curry looking great. Rolly Winkler, as I said, not super, super diced to the socks. Not that conditioned, as Louis Marco used to say. Diced to the socks out of the box. Not that conditioned. And he needed to be super diced if he wanted to beat Brandon. I don't think it's going to happen. Akeem Williams, surprisingly good. Surprisingly good, pretty conditioned. Not as conditioned as the top guys. Not enough to crack the top six. But he will be in the top ten, I believe so. He's huge. He's one of the biggest guys on this stage. He's a freak, but he has a thick skin, and no matter how much he gets conditioned, he will never look more more shredded than the top guys, unfortunately. Rolly Winkler, this, this shot is really hurting him. Back double bicep. Horrible shot for him. When he is lean, when he is peeled, it doesn't look that bad. But if he is a little bit off, it's obvious. It's obvious, and unfortunately, I don't think he will win the Mr. Olympia this year. But, you know, some things change. Uh, from the pre-judging to finals. These guys, you know, use their ethics, they, they carb up, they do all kinds of crazy protocols that their coaches are providing for them, and they make crazy changes in, in one day or two. So we'll see what happens tomorrow. Maybe something different happens. Anyways, now we are done with the call-outs, and now we're going to watch some comparisons. Now the judges are going to call, call out the bodybuilders that they want to see compared. And they're going to have the first call-out, the second and the third. And uh, maybe the fourth one as well. Yeah, 16 competitors, so probably four, four callouts. And uh, now we're going to compare them and you're going to see what the placements are going to be pretty much. It's usually the way, the way it seems at the prejudging. The things don't really change that much uh, later on. And only the top 10 is going to make to the finals. So uh, let's see who do we have in the first callout. And the judges are calling, of course, uh, William Bonac, Harry Chopin, Brandon Curry, uh, Rolly Winkler, Dexter Jackson, and Steve Kuklo. Steve Kuklo cracked the top six. That is amazing. But that can change tomorrow. So if somebody else edges him out tomorrow at the finals, you know, that the top six place for him is not guaranteed. It is guaranteed that he will be in the finals, yeah? But will he be sixth or fifth? We don't know that. We'll see tomorrow. But uh, this is for now your top six. As I said, Hari. A really nice breath of fresh air. This guy is going to be fourth at least. And that's what I'm saying for the past couple of weeks. I was pretty sure ever since I saw him at the Vancouver Pro. Now, he may even be, <laughs> he may even win the Mr. Olympia. It's possible. If he somehow comes even harder and fuller the Mr. Olympia finals. But uh, that's just uh, a long shot. I still think Brandon Curry is going to win it. With this kind of mass, with these arms, with these uh, conditioned legs... You know, his legs not the biggest, but very conditioned and very detailed, making them look much better than they actually are. And with that back, in overall structure and everything, presentation, I just think he's the best one. I just, if I have to say anybody, that would be him. And as far as the second spot, you can go three ways. You can go with Hadi, Roly, or William. That's the, the, the three guys that can beat second place. But if I have to say it right now, I would say Rolly Winkler, second, William Bonek, third, and Hardy fourth. That is the same thing I said before when I made my prediction video. Anyways, I'm not sure about these things, I'm just guessing here. Anyways, Dexter, sure, great, better than last year. If he cracks the top six, which is very, very possible, it means he's still in the game, man. This guy is only two months out of being 50 years old. So still, very huge accomplishment, cracking the top six at 49 years of age, in the open, not in a 2-12, in the open, against these monsters, these freaks. And um, here you can see Rolly Winkler, so this is why he's not going to win the Mr. Olympia. The glutes, the hamstrings, and especially the lower back. Uh, his lats are too high, and the lower back is just so shallow. No spinal erectors, no lower lats, nothing on that, in that whole region. 
not much better from Steve Kuklo. So Steve Kuklo, you know, he gets conditioned, but his muscle seems dead. That's what I like to say when I try to explain his physique. No, no, no life in that muscle. But still, cracking the top six at the Mr. Olympia, that's a huge thing. That's really a huge accomplishment. And that's what I said when I made my prediction video. This is exactly the lineup that I had in mind. Exactly. So if I get this right, you gotta give me some credit, guys. <laughs> so as you can see, Harry Chalpan looking amazing. Very, very hard, very thick. A lot of muscle on his frame, on his small frame. Especially those quads. I mean, those legs are just looking outstanding. Really, really. I, I love it. I love his physique. Now, is this the kind of physique that should represent a Mr. Olympia? I wouldn't say so. If you compare his physique to Phil Heath, to Jay Cutler, to Dorian Yates, to Ronnie Coleman, to Lee Haney, to Arnold, I don't know if you would like to have a Harry Chopin poster in your gym or in your room. I don't think he's that good. But I wouldn't be complaining if that was uh, Brandon Curry. I think Brandon Curry is the most complete and the most impressive guy right here. With his arms, especially, I mean, I love those arms. I really love those arms. And with that back. That back is really Mr. Olympia worthy. And Rolly Winkler, I mean, he looks amazing from the front, but he is not as conditioned, which can change by the time finals come. But his back is never going to change. The high lats and the shallow lower back never will change. But look at Brandon here. Look at Brandon, how dominant he looks here. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty confident. I can say Brandon is winning the Mr. Olympia. Yeah, he's our next champion for sure. And those legs are improved. I think they're better than they were at the Arnold Classic. I think they are. Yeah. Dexter, no way he can crack the top four. He cannot beat Hadi. No way. No way. Top four for Dexter Jackson not going to happen this year. Fifth spot would be like the best case scenario, but we'll see even if that happens. I just hate that they didn't really uh, compare Patrick Moore to the big guys. I mean, they really went for size, this Mr. Olympia. So they have Steve Kuklo, who is one of the biggest guys on the stage. I mean, still very complete, very good guy, but I would like to see Patrick Moore compared to these guys, because he's smaller, for sure, but he's very conditioned. This is a good pose for, for, um, for Dexter. And also the back pose are really good for him, especially this one. Look at it now. I mean, from the back, you can make an argument that he looks better than pretty much the entire lineup. Especially the back double bicep. Look at him here. I mean, this is really a good pose for him. He definitely looks better than Rolly in the back double bicep. Maybe even better than Hadi. Is it better than Brandon and William? I wouldn't say so. I wouldn't say so. But still, is just having great back and the great back details enough to, you know, beat guys who are much better from the front and from the sides? I don't think so. I don't think so. Back is very important to the Mr. Olympia and pretty much any competition, but not that important. It's not all you need. And uh, that being said, it's possible that the role is going to win the Mr. Olympia, but not very likely. And not only because of the back and the back side, but because of the conditioning. And as I said before, the conditioning can change. These guys can carb up and they can change the things, but we'll see. Anyways, judges are really pushing them in these comparison rounds. And they're pushing me because I'm non-stop talking for 12 minutes now or 13 minutes. Probably 12 because I cut this video a couple of times. And um, it's not easy, but let's keep talking. Let's keep analyzing. So as you can see, back lat spread, a very good pose for pretty much the entire this lineup. Everybody is good in back lat spread, especially Hari. And Roll is really looking good. Side tricep, this variation of Roll is side tricep looks good, but it's not a proper side tricep. William Bonac, not that good. Brandon Curry, he has a little bit of distension in stomach. First time I'm seeing this. But he did get bigger. He did get bigger and he did get fuller. And that's what happens. That's what happens. But in the abs and thighs, it doesn't look off. The abs are really developed and symmetrical. The same thing goes with Hadi and with Rolly, but not with Bonek. Bonek's stomach is always his weakness. It is a huge mess. And there is basically somewhat of a four-pack or a three-pack. <laughs> But uh, definitely not a very proper and um, aesthetically looking uh, midsection. Most muscular, very good pose for Rolly. If he was just a little bit sharper, he would dominate the stage when he does that. But not so much, really. I would go with Brandon still. I still find Brandon's physique the most impressive right here. And so we come to the second lineup. And now we're going to see who is in that second lineup. And as you can see, you have Lucas Osladil, Akim Williams, Luke Sando and Sergio McMillan, left to right. So, in this lineup, I would go with Cedric, simply because of his shape. He has very, very aesthetic shape, that small waist, the broad shoulders, the height. To put it in one word, his flow is making him stand out. Akim Williams looking very big, 
and I think he's beating uh, Luke Sando, I'm pretty sure about that. And I think Lucas Hosladel is also better than Luke. Luke Sando. I just think I just think Luke really missed the mark. He's really off. Really watery. This is like something like Indie Pro. And at Indie Pro, Akim Williams uh, destroyed pretty, pretty much uh, Luke Sando. Not only Akim, but Hassan Mustafa also beat Luke, and that was his pro debut. And right now we're watching Luke Sando at his first Mr. Olympia. This is his Mr. Olympia debut. So you cannot expect too much from a guy, but if he came like he was at the Arnold, he would be battling for that fifth or sixth spot. Unfortunately, it's not the case. Overall impression of this entire Mr. Olympia is that pretty much most guys came off. Nobody's really conditioned. Only a handful of guys, but not that much. And here is what I'm saying about Cedric. This shape, this shape is what is going to grant him victory in this lineup. And also Luke Osladil, I mean, uh, the, the details, the conditioning, very, very good, but not better than Akim's. So I would go Cedric, Akim, Lucas, and then Luke in this lineup. Now, tomorrow things may change, really. These guys are really known for making huge changes in only one day. Because, I don't know if you guys compete, but if you ever did a show, you would know that the hydration really happens in the last 24 hours. And uh, this Mr. Olympia is about 24 hours from the finals. So these guys are probably holding off a little bit. Now, they know that they must really push a little bit harder for the pre-judging so they don't fall out of uh, top 10. And also, if you give horrible impression of the pre-judging, the chances, the likelihood of you being much, much better at the finals are not very big. So, you need to be very good at the pre-judging as well, but most people are looking better at the finals. Sometimes it's the opposite, but it's usually this way. Phil Heath was known for that. Phil Heath would pretty much always come much better at the finals and shut the door, shut the door hard. You know, at the pre-judging, it would be kind of, you know, questionable is he going to win it or not. But when the finals came, he would be just, you know, door shut down. Nobody else can enter so the thing the same thing can happen right here with these guys right here and i think it can happen with cedric if he dries out it can happen with akim if he hardens up a little bit and with luke if he hardens up a little bit also so we'll see what happens tomorrow but uh, everything is possible really and i hate that patrick moore is not in the second call out and i think they're actually put him in the second call out later so let's see i think they will actually compare him to these guys and in my opinion he's better than pretty much all of them because he came conditioned here you can see him in the last call out with juan morel john de la rosa max Schaus, mike lockett and muhammad chaban and on the hard right also of course patrick moore and i think he's the best one in this last lineup i'm really disappointed uh, in juan i really thought juan is going to bring something much better and maybe even crack the top five but it's not gonna happen as you can see he's entirely flat and you know, too flat, too flat. Conditioned, sure, but too flat. And uh, Patrick Moore really brought it. I mean, look at him here. He just doesn't have... Uh, he has good structure, but he doesn't have enough muscle to clash with these guys, to, to beat them. But he's very young, and this is his Mr. Olympia debut. So we'll see what happens in a couple of years. I'm pretty sure we can expect huge things of this guy. With this frame, you know, has an axe frame. Huge quads, very, very wide shoulders, very wide shoulders, crazy wide shoulders, and small waist, and developed abs as well. If he just manages to hold on to his tight waist and gain muscle overall, just come bigger and keep the small waist, I can see him doing great things in a couple of years. But these guys, Juan Morel missed the mark, um, John De La Rosa missed the mark, Mohamed Shaban came way off, but he wasn't really much more conditioned at the Portugal Pro when he won. He won it because the lineup was very weak and uh, he was the most complete guy out there, but uh, he wasn't really super conditioned and then he is not conditioned now. Um, on the right, you can also see Michael Lockett. Very conditioned, but the back is really missing. And Max Charles, that thick skin is really hurting him. No matter what he does, I don't think he can ever get that conditioned. If he came a little bit more conditioned or just, you know, shredded, he would look much smaller. He would look just flat. But look at Patrick Moore here, polished, polished, every single muscle is visible, everything, you know, you can see spinal erectors, you can see crazy Christmas tree, glutes in check, detailed, shredded glutes, hamstrings as well, and, and this back, it's not the most massive here, it's probably the smallest one, but with this conditioning, it looks the most impressive, I like it the most, 
Hopefully, we will see him tomorrow at the finals. Hopefully, he will crack the top 10 and take the 10th place. I would really love to see that. But by the way they, they compare these guys, by the prejudging, I don't think it's going to happen. Anyways, now they have another uh, call out. And here you can see Dexter and Steve Kuklo, who were in top 6, being compared with Lucas Osteldil and Akeem Williams. So it means that Lucas Osteldil or Akeem Williams can actually crack the top 6. But we'll see about that. We'll see about that tomorrow. As for now, it doesn't really seem that way. If they were sure about it, they wouldn't put uh, Dexter and Steve in the middle. So they're probably trying to decide at this point who is going to take the 5th and who is going to take the 6th spot. But maybe they you know, decide to change some things, but no, I don't think so. I think um, Lucas is definitely not in a ballpark of Dexter and, uh, and Steve, because he is not as muscular. He needs more muscle and he needs a better frame. He doesn't have that kind of uh, frame, but he is conditioned as hell. You can see exactly what I'm talking about right here. So if you take a look at Osladil, he is conditioned, but look at the quads, compare them to Dexter's and chest and shoulders. And now compare Dexter to Steve, Steve Kuklo. He is much bigger than him. So I'm pretty sure it's going to be Steve Kuklo and Dexter fighting for that 5th and 6th spot. Who is going to take it? It's very close. If you go with size, then you will go with Steve, but if you want details, then Dexter is your man. You can see exactly what I'm talking about in this uh, pose that is coming up next. Back double bicep. Look at it here, look at the details of the back. Now this is actually back lat spread. Still, the same thing. Look at the details, the, the, how much polished Dexter is. And for this reason he may edge out um, Steve Kuklo. But from the front, it, and from the sides, it's pretty obvious that uh, Steve is much bigger than Dexter. So anything is possible, really. We're gonna see tomorrow. These things, this is really details that is separating these guys. And we still don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll see how conditioned will these guys be and what will be their full shape. But it's very close, very close between Steve and, and Dexter. You know, from the front, I would go with, with Steve because he's bigger and fuller. From the sides as well, but from the back, I would go with Dexter. Now we'll see what the judges are caring for more. So we'll see tomorrow. Anyways, it's very close, but as far as... So we have the top six, pretty much. We have the top six. We know the top four, and this is your top six, probably, Dexter and Steve. But you have four more guys that will enter the top ten. And it's apparently going to be Lucas Hostel and Akeem Williams. But what about the two other guys? Is that going to be Patrick Moore? I really hope so. But by the looks of it, it may be Lucas Sando and Cedric McMillan. But I would like to see Cedric definitely in the top 10, but I don't know about Luke. Anyways, if you want to watch my analysis of the top 4, Harry Chopin, William Bonac, Brandon Curry and Rolly Winkler, you can check my previous video. And this is it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and please subscribe, because more videos are following this one. Thank you very much for watching. All the best. Bye-bye.